Today's video is going to be showing you how to do stamping with blending brushes to create this ombre look. Hi everyone, I'm Mindy Egan and welcome to my channel. I would love it if you subscribed, liked this video, and shared it with your friends. This is the Shimmering Season stamp set by Gina K Designs exclusively for Simon Says Stamp for their Stamp Timber collaboration. These typically do sell out really quick, but keep in mind you can do this technique with any stamps that you already have. Now to do my stamping, I am going to be using a uh, sticky grid, grid mat from Waffle Flower. One of these days I'll remember what it's called, but it's a sticky mat from Waffle Flower. I had actually attempted to create this card before and it was... It was pretty hard to do because I was always being so careful about keeping my cardstock in the exact place. So to film it, I decided I'm going to recreate the card and this sticky mat is going to make it so much easier to do. So I removed the foam insert of my Misty tool and I placed this sticky mat in the inside. Now I don't need any magnets. I can just take my cardstock and place it anywhere I want on that sticky mat. Now I'm taking this large snowflake image. You can see I already have it stained, but I'm going to place that kind of towards the top and then in the center of my card panel. I am using Hammer Mill cardstock. It is super smooth. Any white cardstock will work for this, of course. Now I want to do a rainbow color combination. I, I love my blues for snowflakes, but I was just really in a rainbow mood. And I'm going to start off with blush. So off on the left hand side, I have my ink pad. I'm grabbing a large blending brush and I am going to apply my ink to the stamp set with the blending brush. Now the reason I decided to use blending brushes instead of mini ink cubes or my large ink cube is that I can really control how much or how big of an area I want to apply my ink. Now the second color I'm gonna come in with is going to be a bubble gum. So it's just a different shade of pink and I'm kind of, moving my misty of my the door of my misty to figure out exactly where i want that color to go and i'm going to overlap it with that previous color this is one of the reasons why i picked a blending brush is because i am able to create those really soft transitions and not such a hard look when it transfers from one color to another then I'm gonna come in with Melon, and I also chose a fairly light colors. If I were to try and remake this, I would probably go probably one more shade up. In the Simon Says Stamp inks, they come in trios, which I do have, and I would probably go, go one more step up, and I'll show you why here in a minute why I would have done that. But what I'm really loving right now is that I can stamp this design numerous times. My cardstock is not budging, which was super helpful because like I said, the first time I attempted this technique, I always had to worry about putting my cardstock down in that bottom left-hand corner and making sure it stayed there or it could have shifted. So this sticky mat or any type of sticky mat you have really works great for this technique. So continuing with my rainbow colors, I had done sprout for the green, sea foam for blue and then i'm going to come in with lilac which is going to come back around to the top and overlap i did come back in with my brush a little bit i think i did that off screen to help that transition just a little bit better between that kind of reddish tone and also my light purple now i like to use a palette knife to help release my cardstock from that sticky mat and then what I'm going to do is come back in with those blending brushes, trying to use up some of that leftover ink, and I'm gonna go back over those areas with their coordinating color. Now this is where I had kind of thought that maybe I should have stamped them in a darker shade so that the snowflake stands out a little bit more. Just an idea for you to try if you are going to try a technique like this. This still works using the same color uh, that I stamped with, that still works. But the snowflake might have popped out just a little bit more if I would have gone with a darker color initially. Once I have all of that color on my background, I'm going to place that back into my Misty, which still has the sticky mat in it. And I'm going to grab one of these sentiments. I love this scripty sentiment. There are coordinating dies, I believe, that you can purchase separately, which I definitely would love to have cut this out if there's a die for the word Christmas. I'm actually not real sure. But I decided just stamping it in the center of my circle is going to look beautiful stamped in this Altenew Obsidian ink. It is a really nice dark pigment ink. 
and once I stamp that down, I'm going to be a little careful because pigment ink does take a little longer to dry. So I'm going to bring in a smaller sentiment off of the stamp set, and I'm going to ink that up with the obsidian ink as well. Just press gently. They are very small letters, and you don't want to squish it and distort it. Now, as I mentioned, it's a pigment ink. It can take a little while to dry. So I'm going to bring in my Ranger heat tool and just help speed up that drying process so I don't smear this. As you may know, I love to add splatters to my background. So here I'm going to just cover that up with a post-it note that I kind of ripped down to a size that I needed for the sentiment. And to do my splatters, I am using Perfect Pearls in gold and in white. So I put a little bit of that powder on my work surface, added some water, and flicked that onto my background. Then I can remove that mask that I used for my sentiment, and I'm once again going to use my heat tool to dry my splatters because I don't want to smear those either. And then I'm going to take this over to my paper trimmer, and I'm going to trim this down a little bit. I love rainbow, but it was a little bit too much. I needed a pop of white, and I don't have the exact measurements for this, but I trimmed a little bit off of each side, the right and the left side, so that it's going to give me a white border. Um, so it's still going to measure five and a half, but it might be about four inches. I didn't measure it. I just went right up to the snowflake on each edge. I backed that with a piece of cardstock that was cut to the same size, just kind of give it a little bit of lift, and then added this to a white card front that is four and a quarter by five and a half. And I really love just that simple white border strip on the edges. I'm going to finish it off by attaching, I think these are angel aura rhinestones, and I'm attaching them into the center of each of the snowflakes going around that entire circle, just using my pick and stick tool and some liquid glue that I have in a fine tip bottle. So that finishes off my rainbow snowflake. I love the change up in this because normally I do blue with my snowflakes, and I really love how this technique came out. All of the supplies are listed down below in the video description and over on my blog as well. And as I stated, this typically does tend to sell out pretty quick, but you can use this technique on your other stamp sets as well. Thanks for joining. See you soon.